because this has been an amazing proof that bamboo is strong and that we're getting stronger with bamboo. So the World Bamboo Ambassadors in this room, right here, Jennifer is a new bamboo ambassador, Hans Friedrich's here, Friedrich's here. Vince Mack is here. I don't know if any of them, I would. Anyway, we're a group all committed with all different levels of expertise, uh, kind of carrying that bamboo torch around the world. So we, uh, we're a member of the Global Compact, not, not a big deal, United Nations Global Compact. It just means that you're committed to the sustainable development goals, and we try to push those. They've been mentioned in all the presentations, I think, so I won't uh, spend too much time talking about the goals. But I feel like bamboo, and I know many of you feel like bamboo fits into so many of the development goals, and the market is showing that, People's attitudes are reflecting that, and so that's the way forward. Um, I want to mention this. This is in the last uh, sector. There was some conversation about bamboo for food, food for fodder, chicken, cows, whatever. Bamboo for food is so incredibly important. And I spoke with Caroline uh, earlier from Kenya. I think if any of you are really, really interested in growing a lot of bamboo you should be looking at growing bamboo for food. And I don't mean just shoots. I mean food to food fortification. The science is out there. A new book was published two years ago all about the nutritional benefits of bamboo. Nutraceutical, pharmaceutical, and bamboo powder. Bamboo can be created into a powder and used as a supplement to increase the nutrition of our food. Think about that. So don't cut it down necessarily to feed some cows. Let's feed the people on the planet. So yeah, less waste. So that's the book I'm mentioning, Bamboo Shoe, Superfood. It is an incredible reference, and you can find it on Amazon. So we've talked about carbon, and we've talked about bioactivated carbon, and charcoal, and industrial uses, and traditional utilization, and contemporary utilization, sustainable communities and development. This is all the things we've been talking about for the last two days, and I hope you all are feeling really powerful, because we are. Climate action, unfortunately, has pushed us up against the wall now. You know, we are all realizing this. 10 years ago, we wouldn't have had this conversation, because everybody was just in their own little world. We hadn't had COVID. We hadn't watched all the typhoons, wiped out all these people. And now, we're, you know, we're all waking up, saying we've got to do something, right? And so it's kind of strange that this humble plant, uh, and that my introdu introduction to bamboo was through the garden, uh, that this humble plant now has the ability to be a powerhouse and help us with climate mitigation. So all these things we've been talking about, um, this is what the World Bamboo Organization is about. So we see potential everywhere. And the promoting the plant, you know, you're hearing that more. It used to be that the designers, the architects, the product designers, all people, they, weren't, they never cared about the plant. They didn't, they didn't even know what the names were, right? But if you don't have a plant, you can't do anything with bamboo. So we really have to think more about planting bamboo, understanding the cultural, uh, the cultural requirements of growing bamboo, maintaining it, harvesting it, preserving it, etc. Yeah, some of the statistics on degraded land, bamboo fits perfectly into that. Uh, just globally, 2.6 billion people depend on agriculture, but only 52% of the land mass is available uh, uh, to grow healthy food. So we need a tremendous push to plant bamboo. Uh, another thing the organization feels really strongly with is just partnering, right? We just need to partner. And almost every one of you who stood up here at the microphone or on the stage has said, we need to collaborate. So that's what our organization has been trying to do for a long time, with very little resources, but with a tremendous amount of dedication. So World Bamboo Day, that was declared. It's like, why is it September 18th? Well, it happens to be the initiation of Thailand's Forest Department, which had, in 2008, its 100th birthday. We happened to be there 
having the World Bamboo Congress in Bangkok, where I met some of you, and the uh, king and the royal family said, this is what we're going to do with the forest forestry department is declare the 18th of September World Bamboo Day. This will give us and everyone else a chance to really focus on bamboo. Now every day for us is bamboo day, right? <laughs> but if we can get this, you know, out to the world that there's a day to focus on bamboo and spread the word bamboo, it'll help promote our campaign. So now, since 2018, it's celebrated all over. I mean, thousands and thousands of people, it's wonderful. Sometimes it's just something simple at a zoo, with a children's program, and, and you know, it's, it's, there's been all kinds of manifestations of World Bamboo Day, but I encourage you to try, to try to celebrate in some way. If you have a business, try to push it. If you've got a, a school, teach it, whatever. September 18th is World Bamboo Day. So that partnership goes towards the ambassadors too. It's basically just partnering and sharing the word. We've got the World Bamboo <laughs> Workshop. This is gonna be the fifth workshop. Uh, Juan Pablo mentioned it, and Tono mentioned it, and we're thrilled. Um, last year's was in Vietnam. Vince was one of the helpers. It was uh, an amazing event. Could I just see a show of hands, if you don't mind me, asking for audience participation? How many of you in the room have actually been, ever been to a World Bamboo event, either a workshop or a conference? I'd just like to see some hands. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we're going to be in Punta Brava in Guatemala. This is going to be an exceptional event. And I'm just so thrilled to be able to work with these folks uh, from Wibu and from CASA because it's going to be a remarkable event. It's not just about hands-on learning a bamboo joint. We're going to do that. We're going to teach propagation methods. We're going to have some culinary and beverage making out of bamboo leaves. Mauricio Mora from Mexico, who's a World Bamboo Ambassador. We're going to have Joe Shear from Puerto Rico teaching bamboo crafts. So it's going to be a really fantastic phenomenon. So keep that on your calendars and join us in Guatemala. I was going to have you stand up, but I think everybody knows who Tono and Ellie and Juan Pablo are by now because they're just so friendly. But I am going to ask my friend Kay to come up now. Kay will introduce himself. He is the president of the Taiwan Bamboo Society. And he and his society have convinced the Forestry Department and the National Craft Institute to support our event. And we'll be there in April next year. So he'll, he'll welcome you to Taiwan. <laughs> Two-day tour to take you to see 
uh, part of the, the Bamboo Expo and you know other locations in, in Taiwan. The Bamboo Expo is now a centralized event. Instead, it's a decentralized event, which means that we have uh, a few different locations in Taiwan to showcase different content related to Bamboo in Taiwan. And so, on the behalf of uh, Taiwan Bamboo Society and our governments, I'd like to invite you all to submit your paper and come to Taiwan next year. Thank you. share this all with you because Taiwan is an unbelievably beautiful country, very intelligent, clean, trusting, and their technological innovations in bamboo is superior. So I hope you'll join us. So again, I could just keep reading my slides, but what I want to talk about is now where do we go? How do we move forward now? We all have met, everybody feels really comfortable with each other, networks have been formed, cooperation, everybody agrees that we need to do something. So I want to just share with you again that the World Bamboo Organization is free. You're all members. Anybody can just go to the home page, says you want to get our e-news, we put your name in there, and you'll get the announcements about our events, you'll get any other kind of promotions that we might be telling you about other events around the world or other recent things that you should know about. Um, See up here, reference papers, top of the page. We have, since 2008, um, all the proceedings from uh, the, the conference in Bangkok, in Belgium 2012, Mexico 2018. Um, they're all on there. Uh, last year, the WBO worked with the University of British Columbia's forestry department to host a um, uh, sustainable, uh, engineered bamboo for sustainable construction. Um, online webinar. If you missed it, I'm sorry, but all the PowerPoints, everything is on that site, and um, I hope you'll find some information. Some of it's getting old, and I, Andres and I were talking, you know, some of the literature might seem a little bit old. You're like, oh my god, that was all the way to 2012? But you know what? We all build on, on what the other people ahead of us have done, and so I think it's important to read what's out there and take what you can from it. So that's something that's on the website. Um, other things I was going to mention, but I'm a little bit embarrassed about it, is the BAM book. And Vincent asked me, what can he do as an ambassador? I really need help to develop the BAM book. Um, it's, uh, it, it's kind of like the yellow pages, if you're dumb enough to remember what yellow pages were. But in, in the United States, we used to have a big phone book that would list all the companies. But these are kind of, um, we don't just list everybody, we make sure that um, these companies are legitimate and these experts that we list are legitimate. And so the BAM book is there, you can look it up by country. If you feel like you're an expert and you really want to be in that BAM book, just send us an email, info at worldbamboo.net. We'll make sure you're really telling the truth about who you are and where you live. And uh, we'll put you in there. So the BAM book is one of our resources as well. Um, so I've worked really hard on the social media thing. Um, Emma Kearns has been helping me with the LinkedIn. Uh, thank God there's people out there that really do like to volunteer. She's been wonderful on LinkedIn. But the rest of it has been me fulfilling Facebook pages and Twitter accounts and all that. If any of you really want to help, uh, I'd love to have you help me. Um, our, um, our, our mailing list goes out to over 6,000, I think, now when we do the e-news. But Plant Bamboo. Think Bamboo was something that we did a really long time ago. And then we had Keep Bamboo Strong, Bamboo Now, which was for the, Bam, uh, for the Taiwan conference that got canceled. Bamboo's growing. Plant Bamboo also is one of our hashtags. But now I think we need Next Generation Bamboo, or I don't know what the next hashtag is, but if you are social followers and like those kind of hashtags, let's think about it together. So, the only source of revenue that World Bamboo Organization gets are some donations from corporate par partners. Now, I'd love to think that some of you out there would love to help World Bamboo Organization. 
a dollar a day, three hundred sixty-five dollars a year. Now, for some people, that that might sound like wow. I don't know the block is fair, but some of you are going to Starbucks and buying five dollar coffees. So it's not a lot just to help me pay for the URLs, just to help me pay for things that go on. I do not have a secretary. If you send an email to World Bamboo, I'm the one that answers you. I'm the one that has to keep pushing the ambassadors and everybody and trying to find hosts for events. So it's not going in my pocket. I don't have five BMWs like one pocket. I don't. <laughs> I have a seven year old mom. But um, anyway, I'd love for your support. These are our, these are our current sponsors. A couple of these are in common uh, or were members of like International Union of Forest Research Organizations who haven't given much attention to bamboo, but okay. Um, Taiwan Bamboo Society, of course. This is a logo of, of Korea. We hosted a World Bamboo Congress in Korea in 2015. They still send me a couple thousand dollars a year just because they think what I'm doing is important. So, um, you know, I thank any of you out there who are sponsoring us, but if any of you wish to help us further, I truly appreciate it. So where do we go and how do we move forward? That's gonna be up to a lot of you. I'm getting tired getting tired of carrying the torch. But with all of your support and all the great World Bamboo Ambassadors and all the amigos and Bambuceras mm -hmm. I'm meeting along the way, we'll keep going, and, but with your help. So thank you very much. I do want to say that we've been talking about it as an agroforestry crop for a long time. There's not too many Americans here, Everett's here. The USDA started importing bamboo for commercial use, for commercial trials, a long, long time ago. In Europe, Mazel introduced bamboo in the 1850s in France. Yeah, it was a pretty plant, but he was also concerned with what that plant could do. So we have had this resource. We have had experts in cultivation, nomenclature, utilization, now for a few decades, many decades. So we really do need to do something now. It's time, right? Bamboo wasn't commercialized in China until 30 years ago. It wasn't until the Chinese government finally said, you know what, we've got all this bamboo, we gotta do something with it. It was the Dutch and Canadians that started in Barta Begin, right? So if China can develop the industry that they developed in 30 years, Granted, they had a lot of bamboo, but a lot of your countries have bamboo too. So it's time, we've got to move forward. Let's not give up, let's not give up. This is now a new starting point for bamboo. The other progress delay, I think, is in a lot of myths. And some of the myths have been broken here in the last couple of days. But don't say you're gonna make money in three to five years, you will not. Don't think that Moso is the best bamboo that you can plant, because it's not, right? There's a lot of myths. Even at 35% more carbon dioxide than any other plant, right? Let's not throw numbers out there, unless we can validate and show exactly where that information came from and validate. I've heard every myth there is, and I've had to deal with everybody that says, oh, it just takes over your garden, right? So let's all get on the same boat about our facts and what bamboo can do. And okay, maybe we don't know all the answers, right? But let's just say we don't. That's why we need some money for that research. That's why we need to consult that expert. Let's not greenwash bamboo. The textile industry has already done that, unfortunately, right? I mean, the lawsuits are terrible about bamboo being, you know, a great, substitute or replacement for cotton. None of us can walk around in 100% cotton gloves, right? I can't. We'd all like to, but we can't. Cotton's a terribly poisoning crop. It ruins the soil. So we, we're all walking around in viscose, but bamboo's not a bad viscose. We just have to clean up the process, okay? Because we know bamboo can do all those other things besides supplies with some leaves to make viscose. So let's get rid of those myths. And let's reorganize, let's be effective, let's 
be effective. Let's collaborate, right? Let's get the science out there, share it. Let's provide all the mechanisms for everybody. <coughs> Not that just a couple countries benefit from this power plant, right? And let's be the go-to organization. That's what I would like. I know there's the Asia Bamboo Association, and there's all these individual countries, organizations, and lots of NGOs. But could we just try to all get together? And we could change the name, I don't care. I just don't want to give up on what we're doing. So thank you. Let's Ooh. make it work.